carry them on. I can't tell you how many times I'll get out of the car and be halfway into the store and realize I don't get every time. And uh, run back to the car and get, and get it fixed up. But we hope and pray that we can get through this thing one of these days and that, uh, you know, that God will manifest himself through it and just uh, show our country, show the world that uh, he, he is still in charge. He is still in charge. We're going to welcome you today. Gail is our worship leader today. She's got some announcements for us. we we'll turn it over to her at this time. Morning. 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 Okay. <laughs> Great first time visitors online this morning. If you're watching this recording later in the week, please comment that this is your first time so we can honor you as our special guest. Our next church birthday is Saturday, October 31st. Happy Halloween at 8.30. Be sure to check the calling club names today. Each week, three random names will appear under our calling club section of the bulletin. Reach out saying hi to encourage our friends to call her apart. Membership at St. John's is up on in mid October, but officially membership month. We would love to have you join our family. We are celebrating all our members today. We pass the friend over a church council member with membership questions. Weekly Revelation Bible study continues most Wednesdays at 1 p.m. here in the library. Anyone looking for study and fellowship as well, video is available as well to all who request. We have a new communion preparation list on the bulletin board for 2021. If you're able to help with this, please sign up for a designated week and month. Thank you. Reminder, don't forget that daylight savings time ends, so set your clocks back one hour next Saturday, October 31st before bed. St. John will celebrate our veterans with an armed service salute during our November 8th service. Plan now to be with us on a special day. And a big happy birthday to Mr. Hag. He's 81 the next week with Lauren. 81. Why do you think, Lauren, you want to cue it up? Absolutely. Okay. She's, she's a 50, Jim. She's a 50, she said. 
Jesus. Yeah. Our invocation. Come bless the Lord who guides us and directs our days. His presence sustains us and surrounds us here. We bless the Lord who is present among us. We will not be shaken or live in fear, but will sing God's praise and worship with a gift of joy. Welcome, your neighbors. <laughs>
All right. Thank you very much. You and Ruby have a good time in junior church. We have got some scripture for us today. Our Bible verse today is from John 14, verses 21 through 27. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself in him. Judas, not as scary, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me, Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. As the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Amen. That was a mouthful, eh, Gail? Amen. Thank you, Gail. She always does a great job. We thank her for each one of you that uh, uses your, your talents and time to be our, our worship leader. We're always looking for more, so if it's something, if you're not afraid to stand up here and speak, uh, speak to people, we usually try to assure people that they won't throw things at you. And, uh, and that's usually the case. And, uh, but now we appreciate everybody that has a part in the service. And we're still trying to, uh, the pastor's group will be singing next week. And you'll see out in the narthex, we've got this, the sign and the poster board that was up here for our campaign, Let the Sun Shine In. Uh, we're trying to shake down a few of those stragglers to, you know, to get them involved. And if you're here today, if you're watching online and you've got a letter and you haven't been involved in our Let the Sun Shine In campaign, but this year, giving your time, your talent, or, or pledging some finances, we need your help. We need your help. I know these are tough times. We're not asking anybody to take food off their table or not pay their rent to give to the church. Nothing like that. But we need your help. We need you to be involved. Every little bit helps. And uh, so if you're watching online, we need you. If you're here today, we need you. And uh, we're just trying to do what the Lord has commissioned us to do and make a difference in this community and uh, in whatever parts of the world God allows us to reach out to, to be there for the gospel of Jesus Christ. So our message today, we're concluding the heart series for, for October. And uh, I said to Kathy, yes, and I, uh, after last week and having the group up here, you know, and just enjoying that and being in church and just worshiping the Lord, I said to Kathy, I said, wow, I've got to do something today. <laughs> I said, they're, they're depending on me to preach today. And so we're very excited about that. And uh, well, weren't they good last week, though? I mean, my goodness. They were good last year when we had them, but last week, my, my goodness. And uh, I found myself uh, thinking, <laughs> laughing about you know, Daniel, the father, when he said, uh, and the little thing about uh, it's, it's amazing what goes through your head sometimes up here. He was telling us in the story about as they were coming and the cow being on 894 or whatever the, the road was and just plopping down there. And uh, So it is amazing some of the things that uh, goes, goes through all of our minds, you know. I, I imagine that uh, your minds have drifted once or twice here in the last five years since I've been your pastor, even during sermon time. Everybody except Bill, I always can tell he's intently focused on every word that I'm saying. You know, so. <laughs> but but, but it, it's amazing how our minds will just kind of go here and kind of go there, you know? And I was listening to one preacher one time, and I mean, he was preaching away, and he was preaching hard, you know? And uh, he was just going in and hammering the gospel, and he stopped. And he looks at his watch, and he says, I wonder how the cowboys are doing. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's got a watch. <laughs> we all knew what cowboys he was talking about, you know? So I'm not thinking about the cowboys or the bears or anybody that's 
morning, and certainly not the Cubs. But we're glad that you're here. We're going to have a good time. And, and God wants us to know that there's a narrow path that we need to follow. He's made provisions for us on a narrow path this morning. And the scripture that Gail has read for us this morning from John chapter 14, that last verse in particular, as Jesus was talking to his disciples, Jesus was talking to that group of men that had followed him around for, for, for a number of years, for probably two, two and a half years at that point. They followed him around. They watched him. They learned from him. They gleaned understanding from him. They gleaned wisdom from him. They, they'd seen the miracles. They'd seen so much go on in this two and a half years that they followed Jesus Christ. But he still kept teaching them. Still kept teaching him. And it's important that we tap into that teaching because he wants to keep teaching us today. Some of you have been in this church a whole lot. 91 years, Don. That's, that's incredible. That's incredible. And then as we filter down, it, it, it's all a blessing to be in God's house among God's people, wanting to do God's work, wanting to be a part of God's work, wanting to see people come to know and experience the same God that you know in a personal way. That's why we tell people all the time, or, or I do at least, what religion are you? I don't have religion. I attend St. John's United Church of Christ in California, but I don't have religion. I've got a relationship with a living God. A living Savior who died for me, who paid the price for my sins. My relationship is with Him. Our relationship is not with, the, with this church or any other church. Or any, uh, any catechism. Or any, it's not that all those things incorporate a bigger picture of theology. But my relationship is with, with Him. The one who died on the cross. The one that put in the ground. The one who rose again on the third day and kept His promise saying He could defeat sin. The ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You can probably tell I haven't preached for a week, that's me. I just might get excited here in a minute, Bonnie. You just never know. You never know. You know, God is good. And the peace that He gives, the world cannot, cannot rival. The world cannot rival. He made this amazing promise to His disciples that He read for us in that 27th verse of chapter 14. He says, Peace, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, uh, do I give to you, but you know, let your mark. Heart, don't let your heart be troubled and don't let it be afraid. Don't let it be afraid. I'm with you. Don't be fearful. Don't be fearful. You ever been, found yourself coming upon a task or a situation or a circumstance and you just really didn't want to do it? Really, I mean, there's 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 jobs, you know, that I think I've probably put off that put off for years around the house because I just really didn't want to do it. You know, and, and yeah, we're, we're fearful. Fearful that it's going to, how much it's going to cost, how much time it's going to take, that I'll do it wrong, you know. And that's probably my biggest fear. But we're fearful about so many different things. And the Lord tells us not to be fearful in our relationship with Him, that we can follow Him, we can trust Him, we can know Him. And He wants to give us the peace that He's promising to His disciples right here in John 14. It's the same peace you and I can have today. The peace that Christ gives, it's a settled sense of satisfaction. That word settled, I mean, it, it, it's more or less a legal term. When we talk about settling accounts, it, you know, from, from, from a legal side, from a bookkeeping side, settling accounts, balancing accounts, what's owed and, and what's paid and all that. When an account is paid in full, it's an account is settled. So, and Jesus has settled our peace for time and eternity. We just have to tap into it. Now, we're battling against an enemy every single day who wants to try to steal our peace, who wants to try to take away our joy. But God gives us provision each day to combat Him. Now, Christ's peace, as I said, is not like the world offers. The world offers something else. I mean, 
uh, that so many different people will say that, uh, well, if I've got enough money, you know, I'll have peace. If I've got this, or I've got enough, uh, somehow it, it all accumulates or uh, espouses itself in wealth of some kind, you know. The old saying, uh, the more toys you got, the happier you are. The biggest car, the biggest boat, the biggest house, the biggest this, the biggest that. You know, all those things. They're subject to the rule of decay, you know. I know a gentleman, my dad's property down there in Paris, Tennessee. A gentleman brought over and he said, I need some place to store my boats. And uh, I forget what the gentleman's name was, but my dad said, well, yeah. He got like 40, 45, 50 acres there. He said, yeah, you store your boats there, you know. And of course, my dad, being the good-hearted person he was and, and still is, he said, I'm not even going to charge him for it. Just bring him on over. And uh, I don't know how many boats he thought he was bringing, but the guy bought over about 25 boats. <laughs> He's not going to take advantage of the situation. He did, but that's not part of the story. But anyway, he brought these boats over and he put them out in his field, and honest to goodness, there was at least 20 or 25 of them when he first brought them over. And uh, there was no car running on most of them. It was, I mean, they were nice. Some of them were newer, some of them were older, but they sat, and they sat, and they sat. Year after year after year, they sat. And you know what happened to them after they were exposed to the elements and they sat and they sat and they sat. They were ruined. They were ruined. The laws of entropy kicked in and, and the, 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 the rain and the cold and, and the snow and the ice and the sun and everything just gradually damaged and broke those boats down. And the gentleman died leaving those boats there. Instead of being able to sell the boats for any kind of profit, my dad ended up probably having to pay to have them towed off. It's garbage. It's scrap. It's scrap. So we can't just set things aside. It wasn't how many boats. I mean, who knows what he had done to accumulate to all to have that many boats, but he just all rotted away. All rotted away. Money may bring happiness. Things may bring happiness in the short term. But it's not a lasting peace. It won't last forever because those things will not last forever either. Now, Jesus' day, we know that Israel was under the rulership of the Roman government at that time, don't we? And the, the Roman government, their character, characterization of peace was similar to some of our, our, our governments today. Not, not ours where we enjoy relative freedom, but different parts of the world where uh, folks were oppressed under whether it's a communist regime or, or otherwise, something like that. The Roman government exerted their force to create peace in two ways. Through power and through pain. Through power and through pain. We'll either rule over you with our authority, with our might, whether it was military might, or otherwise, or we will inflict enough pain upon you as we conquer you that you will be subject unto us. That was their method of keeping peace. That was the method that they felt worked best to keep people in line, to keep things going forward. You know, the peace that the Lord offers us, there's no coercion involved in it. There's no coercion involved in God's peace because God wants to join with us as we follow His Son, Jesus Christ, and what He did for us on the cross. God's peace set, it, it is set apart because He wants to join. He wants to become part of Perry's life every day. He wants Perry to take him not only to his family, but to his work to his you know, place of business, to the grocery, wherever he goes, he wants Perry to, to be with him in a relationship. As, as each one of you, as he does with me. That's the peace that he offers. He doesn't coerce me to do anything. I've chosen to follow him. That song that we sing with the kids sometimes, I have decided to follow Jesus. 
He allows me to make that choice. He allows me to choose to follow Him, to do the things in my life that will uplift Him, give Him honor and glory, but He allows me to make that choice. God doesn't coerce anyone. He tells us the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. There are promises that are inherent in the truth of God. And there's a narrow path of peace that we have to find. Jesus is the source of this peace. He is our gift from the Father. The world offers in many different ways. You know, turn over to Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 25. It tells us there that there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. A hundred different people can tell you a hundred different ways of getting to heaven, to having personal peace in your life, to being fulfilled in your happiness and your joy. And they can all have different reasons, but Jesus is the only way that truly lasts. He's the only one that can deliver, <clears throat> deliver across the board. I can think of my mother from my sinuses. They usually start raining at the most inopportune time. <laughs> uh, if you're watching, Mom, thanks. Thanks. All right. But the peace of God is so important in our lives today. We all encounter obstacles to it. You know. You don't have to raise your hands, but who starts each day with, with good intentions? Only to find at the end of the day that you fell short in one, two, or three different of those areas. We all start today with good intentions. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And the lab yesterday, Kathy, Kathy kind of looked at me. She said, what got into you? I cleaned out the shed. We've been... We've been married eight and a half years. That church needed to be cleaned out for eight and a half years. Just decided to do it yesterday. Clean that shut out, Bill. Looks good. And actually get the lawn more in. You know, I'm not able to, you know, jump in. Good intentions, though. We have good intentions. Sometimes it takes a while for them to manifest. But what can derail us? What obstacles in our daily walk can derail us if we're trying to find that narrow peace in our life? I mean, we all have uh, you know, wrong thoughts sometimes that can derail us. We can all feel guilty about things that we did or things that we wish we had done. That's the amazing thing with guilt. You, know, you can do absolutely nothing at all and you can feel just as guilty about something as someone who just did something horrific. Something horrific. That can derail us. Another thing that derails us is anger. Now I know in this mild-mannered congregation this morning that none of us has ever gotten angry. None of us has ever spoken a word out of turn to someone else. Our spouse, our friends, our neighbors, none of us would ever do that. I say that smilingly, of course, because we're human. We're human. And sometimes it's, it's not even a big thing that sets us off. Well, this is hard. I told you this. My dad is the finest man I know. But if you tell him... If they advertise 99 cents for a hamburger, and you try to charge him a dollar nine, it's a nuclear event. I mean, he goes berserk. He goes berserk. I hope he's laughing right now as he sees it, or at least smiling. But he does. And it's the least little thing that can set some of us off. You have them. I have them. We all do. Anger and bitterness can also derail us as we're looking for that personal peace. 
And then there's 10,000 different things that can hurt us, each one as individuals. But God's peace wants to override that. But it can trip us up. We can be self-centered. We can doubt God's power. You believe God's in charge? And I really don't know. I'm really not sure. We can doubt that God is our greater good. I mean, there's things that happen in all our, uh, all our lives. But I can tell you right here, I don't understand. I don't understand. We know God's in charge. We God allows things to happen. So if we have doubt, we have unbelief, we can even be jealous. Jealous. God wants to meet us at the point of those needs. He wants you to have the peace that He promised the disciples there. And at verse 27, my peace I give to you. It's not something you have to earn. He's given it to us. We just have to claim it on a daily basis. Just as He was promising it to those disciples. So how can we experience this peace as we, we wrap this up this morning? We have to believe that He's in control. We mean the Lord. He's in control of our lives and our circumstances. Otherwise, we'll try to take control and there'll be a conflict and a struggle. When I was riding the train downtown very every day when I was going through some very deep waters, on the back of my monthly train pass, I had, I wrote every day, it reminded me, happiness is this phrase, happiness is a choice, not dependent on my daily circumstances. Someday I felt good. I felt empowered. I felt strong. Other days I felt weak and puny and miserable. But you know the circumstances that I found myself in, whether I felt I was on the mountaintop of happiness and joy, or I felt defeated and weak. Those were circumstances. I could still be happy in the Lord. The circumstances shouldn't have dictated my relationship with God or to my, my demeanor. But all too often they did. But I can still choose to be happy because the one who loves me so, the one who died for me, the one who paid the price for my happiness and promised me his peace was there with me. We've also got to believe that Christ offers, his offer of peace is real. And be willing to accept it in spite of any doubts we might have or our feelings. We must also fully surrender our lives, our mind, our will, our emotions to the Lord Jesus Christ. And trust him. And trust him for the peace that he's promised to his disciples. Those disciples are no different than you. You're his disciples. I'm his disciple. <clears throat> we are co-laborers in this church that's been established over the years to serve, to serve and uplift the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You make St. John's what she is. You make this church the minister in this community that, that she is. We've had some tough times and some things we've had to step back from doing. With all this pandemic stuff, and now they're saying the numbers are going up again. And, and uh, even in talk, talking to some folks the other day, said, well, you know, those numbers keep going up. I won't be able to, to do this or do that, or, you know, and for sure I can't come to church. And you're watching online, you know, we respect you. If you have that fear, we respect you, and we're glad that you're watching online. We're glad that you're watching online. We welcome everyone watching online. And if it comes to the point where you're afraid and you want to watch online, that's why it's available. That's why it's available. But we're here. We're trying to get through this. We're trying to do the best we can. God has assured us that we have His peace. That doesn't mean everything's going to go well. And it broke my heart when I heard Arlene Williams had contracted the COVID down at Cedar Creek. Just being in a room. I mean, they, they went, what about the lungs since you still contracted it somehow? So we know how deadly this thing is. 
But God promises us His peace. As we're praying for her, as we're praying for each one, as we're praying for your safety and doing everything we can to try to make it safe here. I attended the UCC meeting this past week. Most of your UCC churches in Indiana are still not meeting. They're still just meeting on, uh, on Zoom platforms or by computer monitors. And that's their choice. That's their choice. But you know, we, we're doing the best we can to serve God. Thank you for your membership today. Thank you for the peace that we have in Jesus Christ. We're able to celebrate that. We're able to uplift our voices. We're able to be thankful to God for that. If you don't know God's peace today, we invite you to be part of His family. It's a close-knit group, but it's His group. It's His group. Have you admitted you're a sinner? Have you believed that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? Have you confessed those sins to Him? You don't have to tell me anything. You don't have to tell Perry or anybody else anything. God knows your heart. If you're watching online and never trusted Christ as your Savior, just put it in the comments. Pastor, you call me. I'd like to know more about Jesus. And we'll do that. We'll do that privately. And we'll talk. We'll share Jesus with you. Amen. Whatever your need is this morning, God is there. He offers His peace in the same way He did to His disciples. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Let's stand together for uh, page number 63. Praise Him. Praise Him. Let's do just the first verse this morning. Just one verse. 63 is going to take some prayer with us.
Greetings to you. We know you're still doing the, the chemo, and uh, things are uh, still progressing, <coughs> keeping you in prayer. We had been praying for uh, Vivian's husband, Larry, who was supposed to go in for a procedure last Wednesday uh, with his heart, you know, was born with a hole in his heart that they were going to repair. Uh, it ended up not happening, so it's still, we're still going to be praying for Larry. Is, uh, that was pushed out probably a couple weeks, you said. So let's continue to remember Larry Machine, uh, and Roy, and uh, I know we've got just many more on our, our email list and, and your bulletin. Many, many more. Is there some more today that you want to mention? Uh, Carol and Bill, you guys are out to see Jill. How are things going there? She's got to make another decision about another horrible chemo. Mm -hmm. Okay. We continue to pray for this young lady in God's peace uh, in her life. She is talking about someone who is claiming God's peace in a circumstance. Uh, she, she one of the first ones that comes to my mind. Amen. We pray for her. Who else? <coughs> Barry? Uh, Brother Barry, again, uh, he's still not uh, 100%, so he's got to uh, do some more tests here. Uh, power pain off. Okay. Your twin brother. Yes. Wow. Amen. Remember his brother. My sister in law, Mary Schrader, who we've had on our prayer list, it seems like forever, has gone back in the hospice. Uh, I talked to her daughter last night, and she's just there. She just lays there. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, kind of knows him. But most of the time, We've been praying for Mary for a long time. I know that. I mean, literally, literally years. Yeah. She's just tough, and she won't give. Her body won't give up. Amen. We will continue to pray for God's peace for her and for those that are surrounding her. Who else? That's my name. Yeah, Jim. So I just say that you have our church family and all the cars and stuff up would be a great remark. Amen. We were able Jim and Jim and family, they laid the rest of their son Thursday night. We were at the Burns funeral home with them. And uh, none of us ever prepare ourselves to do it. We had to go through a very, very a job. 50 year old young man. And uh, it's the family that's left behind. Uh, it's a very difficult. Pray for Jim and the Joyce and the family and, and uh, his son's wife, April. Extended family of uh, stepchildren there that uh, some of them spoke out. And, uh, there was a lot of hurt, a lot of hurt, and they uh, just pray that God helps them work through that with, with the peace He can give. Thank you, Jim. Right, who else? Any? Uh, is there any unspoken or spoken on hand here this morning? Uh, I think there was one maybe lost in here, but I'm not seeing it. Maybe it was just removed. But uh, Alice, uh, Rachel, says uh, to pray for her granddaughter, Shan. Um, she and her cousin have contacted COVID. That's right. Yeah, Rich Ann and her cousin, I guess she, Rich Ann is a uh, health care worker. I guess she contacted it at work. So let's, let's uplift her. Yeah, she did send me that this week. Thank you, Alice, for, uh, for putting that to uh, Online this morning, they got uh, testing for the grandma, uh, Emily Adams, uh, Matthews, and her dad Art have been tested. But she has to say that you know it came back negative. Okay. Was, by experience, it's a couple couple days at least. Okay. Uh, so let's pray for that whole whole family that uh, are living with one another, and uh, this virus is just so it transmits so easily. They say so easily. Let's pray for that. Thank you, Alice. We'll remember those family in prayer. Who else? Who else? Unspoken? A short of hands. All right. Let's take a moment for silent prayer and uh, go to the Lord's prayer and then recite the Lord's prayer before our morning off. Lord God, we thank you today for your blessings that you 
room to us. Thank you for the group that's uh, come out, Lord, live today and the group that is watching online this morning. We're thankful that as a church we can meet each, each group and the Lord uh, at the point of their need. Thank you for these requests that have been brought before you today. Continue to be with Arlene and Joanne, Lord. And uh, we pray for Larry as he, uh, his surgery has been postponed. Lord, that all of this would go right when the, when the day comes and when it is uh, properly scheduled again. We pray for Roy Rule, Lord. For, uh, for Jerry and the family, Lord, as they're, uh, they're making decisions and choices and Lord, just trying to do the best that they can. We continue to pray for Jill. Lord, uh, Bill and Carol's knees, Lord, and the circumstances she finds herself in with facing another round of chemo. Lord, we just pray that you bless her, that you uplift her, that you give her the peace that only you can. And Lord, uh, as Curry's asked for prayer for his brother Barry, upcoming tests for heart and, and other health issues, pray that you meet him at the point of his need. Lord, uh, for Mary Shore, Lord, who's slid back in the hospice care, it's been a privilege to pray for Mary, Lord, how long it's been. We continue to uplift her. You know, she's a woman of great faith and uh, of a special family. Father, we continue to pray for her. Thank you for Jim Boss, the Lord, and for his family. We just pray that you continue to bless them and give them the peace that uh, only you can. It's uh, what uh, the family is going through. We just thank you that you can give them the peace. That only comes from Jesus. The Lord, as Alice has also asked a request for, uh, for Rich Ann and uh, for the, the family grandparents uh, Lord, that are living there, and as COVID has invaded their world, we should pray that you touch and, and meet them too. And God, there's others, uh, unspoken requests, or others on, online that have voiced that we didn't see, we'll see later, we pray that you just touch them. We pray for this church, I pray for these, these people. Lord, thank you for these that. Love St. John's has been a part of this ministry for so many years. Help us, God, to, to move forward and just make disciples. Or until you come, be faithful in, in the work for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's people said together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of our God. Amen. Thank you so much. This time our ushers will come. You can give as, as you're able to, and it's kind of bless you and your family. And you're watching online. Yeah. Please, we need your help too. Financially, you just you know, drop that check in the mail to you know, St. John's UCC, 1288, South Indiana Avenue, Brown Point, and uh, zip code 46307. And maybe designate on your church office or something like that. We'll see if it goes to the right place and apply it to the right by circumstances. We need you this morning too. How should we start?
Bless our church, bless our people. We, we, we struggle sometimes, Lord, to help us to keep our eyes upon you for that peace that you promise. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, ladies. All right, as we remain standing, closing the service, 410. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. First and the third verse.